I wanted to post a response to Professor Cory Anton's very interesting YouTube video called Against Forrest Gump, in which he points out that the underlying message of the film appears to be that blind luck and unthinking obedience will get you through life. Uh, and I would agree that the film is typical of American cinema in that it serves as yet another installment in the mass media training program desire, designed to have us accept the status quo without question so that we can go about our lives working and shopping and paying taxes without putting up any resistance despite the terrible atrocities our governments regularly enact not only on others but upon their own people in the name of liberal democracy. But I think we can say something more and do a little bit of film history at the same time. Um, you know, more than just training us to be passive dummies like Forrest Gump, the film is also asking us to accept that a dunce who can barely tie his own shoes can also bumble his way into numerous historical events that happen to have been captured on film. And in this way, I think Forrest Gump stands in as an un unintended metaphor for us as the contemporary media consumer. You know, the media consumer as the kind of individual who just trundles across different historical slices of media without really understanding much about them and in no way engaging them substantially because we're just not all that interested. It just flows past our head in an endless stream. Now, all of that said, one of the historical events we see in the film is the Vietnam War. And I think probably the humor of the situation comes from the normal response many audiences would have. Very, uh, We can understand why they would have that, which is namely the idea that a person like Forrest Gump would probably never have been admitted into the military. So it's kind of funny to think of this moron with a machine gun running around in the jungle. But it raises a very interesting point in the history of cinema, and it's one raised by a writer named Olga Zhakova. Uh, I think most of us has probably wondered at one time or another when we're watching this kind of film is how did they get all those tanks and helicopters and guns? Kind of like when the Joker asks Batman, you know, where do you get all those wonderful toys? Well, one of the ways you get all those wonderful toys is to appeal to the U.S. Department of Defense to participate in the production of, the, of your movie. And you can see it in all kinds of film, the films. The production value uh, in terms of the military uh, elements in the mise-en-scene has got to be from their help. Uh, it couldn't be done otherwise. But interestingly, the Department of Defense refused to participate in the production of Forrest Gump, and their rejection came with a number of reasons. These included, supposedly, the, the script had harsh language, uh, lewd representations of sexuality, stereotypical and highly implausible representations of the military and its uniform personality, and above all the script's portrait of soldiers with minimal intelligence. Now, the response from the Department of Defense was not only a refusal to assist with the making of the film, but the statement that the kind of representation the makers of Forrest Gump wanted to make was in no way accurate nor beneficial to the army. Now, of course, most such denials almost always indicate an effort to cover the truth. So by having a nitwit like Forrest Gump join the military, the script is really in fact referring to what was known as McNamara's 100,000 project. And this was a project that took place under Robert McNamara in the 1960s, one that had the Department of Defense recruit men who were below the mental standard usually required by the military. I don't know what scale they were using to determine people's intelligence, but the point being is that the Department of Defense was concerned with what it called historical inaccuracies in the script of uh, Forrest Gump that were in fact all too uncomfortably close to the historical realities of U.S. military conduct during the period that the film represents.